We don't get to pick our parents, and they don't get to pick us, but we do get the chance to learn from each other, and that's what I've tried to do, slowly and sometimes painfully, mostly with a sense of humor <laughs> that can turn defensive or even caustic, but most often simply says, hey, what the heck, because mental illness happens. And many of you out there know that it's happening to someone you love right now. The, the thing about thinking of depression as a moldy cheese is that you also start to think of it as coming with its own set of crackers, as it were. <laughs> when I was a teenager and I began to be the adult in the relationship, my mother would have clear thought days where she would make jokes about being the crazy one in the family, about being crackers. My mother got it by then knew who she was enough to say that people with mental illness are indeed crackers, all right, and, and usually not in a funny way, except my mother was one of the funniest pe persons I've ever known. And she had, a, she had a distinct way of laughing, first throwing her head back and chuckling hard out loud, and then rising up, her whole body shaking violently. Oh, when she laughed, she gave herself over to it fully. It's what the other relatives often point out as my inheritance. You're so funny and you laugh just like your mother, they would say when I was younger. Oh, and I bristled then, because who wants to share anything with a falling down drunk? But now, I relish those comparisons. I hold on to them like a sweater that smelled like her. The same way I cherish her potato latka recipe and smile when I make it, even now, thinking of how she used to tell my sister and me, all of us Catholics, that we were having an authentic Jewish meal. <laughs> she served the latkes with bacon. <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. The, the potato pancakes were heavenly, and still are, especially with cool dollops of sour cream and, and warm, chunky, homemade applesauce and a nice little pile of crisp, salty strips of pig flesh. <laughs> I have no idea where she got the recipe or the idea that with bacon it made a Jewish meal. But with the exception of those latkes and greasy fried chicken spackled with saltines, my mother was possibly the worst cook on the planet. <laughs> so I'm already behind, and the customers are coming in, and I'm plugging along, and I think I'm doing okay on almost everything, until I open my vacuum seal package of pasta dough. And what I hadn't thought about, when you vacuum seal something, there's a pressure. It pushed, pushed all the semolina into each layer of pasta dough. So the pasta dough was not just dry, but like three times thicker than it should be. It was, it was just horrible. It would have been a terrible representation of my dish. And so my business partner, Beth, and John Ermagamo, my PR person, they were in town and they were off having lunch somewhere and I go, okay, I'll call them. I'll call them and see if we can go get some pasta dough because there are some really nice markets that actually sell pasta dough. And during this whole time, I have everything getting crappy and my husband Max and I are trying to fix it and I started to have this complete meltdown. I didn't know what to do because I was already behind. My chef was sick. The appetizers were supposed to go out in like an hour and all the other chefs were trying to help me, but, but they had to take care of themselves and finish their dishes first at least if only one dish is screwed up versus, you know, the whole course of meals. So, calling Beth, calling Beth, nobody answering the phone. Nobody was answering their phone like an hour of freaked out messages. And finally I get a hold of John in a taxi and I had John, a little trick Wolfgang Puck had shown me when I worked for him, I had John get wonton papers and I ended up remaking the filling and putting it in wonton papers. I just, just by the skin of my teeth, just barely got, you know, the dish out. And what was maybe the worst day of my, I don't know. <laughs> to try to explain the stress, God, it's a personal thing. Somebody's asked you to show up, and now I'm showing up very badly. <laughs> and then I don't know how to explain it, it was just... <laughs>
Oh, it was really, oh, it was a really, really, really bad day for me. <laughs> but then, at the end of the evening, I mean, the guests didn't know. They came to the kitchen, and I had five or six guests say that it was the best ravioli that they had ever had in their entire life. <laughs> and I was like, oh, God, thank you. <laughs> I was